Okay, greetings, grade 11 development studies learners. Um, we'll be discussing, this will be our platform, we'll be discussing um, issues related to development studies. Uh, okay, to get, um, to get started, I would like to first um, emphasize what is very important, what like I would always do in class. Learners are expected to always go through their objectives, the specific objectives. These are the objectives that guides the learner as to what material or what um, things they should study with regards to, what spe to that specific topic. So today we are discussing politics and development. So I'm not going to get into details and explain the whole topic um, page by page. That will take us too much time. So what we are going to do is, um, I have with me here the memorandum on the politics and development which activity or project which I gave you. So we are going to work on that one for now. Let's get started. Um, number one, I have noted with very with a um, great concern that you know learners have a tendency of leaving questions open. Now, in development studies, you do not leave a question open, even if you do not know the answer. Always attempt to write something. When you write something, then it means out of five, you can even get yourself a two or one mark. One mark is better than just a zero. So please attempt answering all the questions. Good. Before I start off with anything, if you look here, I gave you instructions. The first instruction says, answer all the questions. Answer all the questions now. That's the very important instruction. It means you have to answer all the questions. You have to write neatly. Please follow the instructions that are given within the question paper. Question one, it says, study the illustration about the central government in Namibia below and answer the questions. So we have three branches of our government. The answers were right there on the diagram. So development studies, please, when you are given a diagram or an image, study what you are given. What is the diagram all about? What does the diagram illustrate or shows you as is, as is in this case? So we have three branches of the government. And then we have our constitution, which is fundamental. Our constitution, which makes up our legislative, our executive, our judicial. Now to begin, the first question it says, I'm from figure 1A. State the function of the branches of government. We're talking about the government of the republic. So the answers were right on this diagram. All I wanted to see was for you to say, number one, we have our legislature. The legislature is responsible for setting up or for making the laws. And then number two, we have our executives. So the executives are the ones that carries out the laws. They are the ones that carries out or they execute or they administer our laws within our country. And then last but not least, we have our judicial. Our judicial is the one that is, that is responsible for evaluating our laws that has been um, set up through the legislature. This is done through the process, um, through um, transparent um, and democratic processes through our constitutional courts and laws. Good. The second question it asks about, um, you know, in what branch of government is the National Council? The National, the National Council is found within our legislature, within our legislature or within our legislative body. Or you can also say within our parliament. Now please take note, the National Council is the one that contains the parliament. That's where the main body is, where, you, where the laws are set. That's where the laws are set and discussed or debate. So the next question, which is Roman 3, it says, what type of government system does Namibia have? The type of government system which we use is a parliamentary democracy. A parliamentary democracy. Now, please take note. Um, I have note when I was marking, when I gave the feedback, some learners wrote a republic. A republic, it's not, it's not wrong, neither is it the correct answer. So please, the correct answer is the parliamentary democracy. In the sense that, you know, it's one, almost one and the same thing. The only difference is that, you know, for the republic, is used in South Africa. And then for us, we use a parliamentary democracy. Good. State any three characteristics of this type of government. So I wanted 
you to give three characteristics of a parliamentary democracy where you can talk about things like, you know, you can say citizens get to decide who run or who lead um, by partaking in the election through a process known as voting. Now, you are expected to know what is voting. Voting is the process where you are able to express your voice through casting your vote. Now, you cast your vote on a ballot paper. A ballot paper is just a paper where you are able to choose your leader, the leader of your choice. So, um, as, I'm going, as I'm doing this, I'm also trying to explain some main, major terminologies which you, may, um, you know, which you may encounter during this time or during the topic. Okay, moving on. Let me just move on. Moving on. Okay, so again, under the parliamentary democracy, we have um, various political parties that partake, you know, that compete for positions within the parliament. We have the formation of cabinet that may have, you know, that may have political collective responsibilities. Good. Um, I'm going to move on. No, we don't have that much time. Name and explain any other two types of government. So the types of government, please, um, they are very clear, straightforward. In the notes that I gave you, we have a one-party state. Now, we have a situation where you say one-party state. When we talk about the one-party state, um, some learners are writing still, is one-party state as the word says, but you still talk about many parties. Please do not talk about different parties. It's just one party that runs and governs the country. We have a dictatorship. Dictatorship, if you go to Uganda, um, Idi Amin, he was a dictator, so he had um, total power. He had total power to lead the government. And then we also have another, another example, so you can talk about the monarchy, where you have um, the king or the queen, and then the generation ahead, or the, gener the, the generation that follows then reigns supreme to, uh, you know, to the positions. We can also have other, um, you know, um, types of governments which you may know. You can list them, it's not a problem. Okay, moving on. Question two. Question two entails... Okay, let me just get my paper straight. Okay, question two. It says, study figure 1B, which is about political protest in Namibia. Now, like it says, you need to study, you need to study the diagram. You need to study the diagram. It's very important. Whatever you are given, you need to always study. What is it about? What does it entail? Before you even read the question. So by looking at this, it says, in the diagram, you have a demonstrator who's, who has a, a poster that says, words cannot truly explain how terrified I am to exist as a woman in Namibia. So that's a very strong um, statement. It gives you many ideas as to what this is about. Okay, starting with number one, Roman one, suggest any three reasons why protesters might demonstrate. In any democratic country, why do protesters demonstrate? They demonstrate because it's a result of maybe gender-based violence, they are being abused, their rights are being deprived. Um, suggest, um, how demonstrations and protesters and protests have negative effects on the development of a country. Definitely, when you have protests and demo demonstrations, development is going to be kept. Development is going to be cut. You know, you are going to have um, looting, chaos in the country. So that is also going to cut. It's going to limit the chances of the country developing. You have, we are going to have water and infrastructure damaged, destroyed, and burned, like as is in the case in South Africa. We have a situation now, we have demonstrations that is happening there. So it's really chaotic. So we are going to end there for today. Um, in our next lesson, we are going to continue with our next topic. Um, definitely my colleague, Miss Tain, is going to, um, you know, record another video on women in development, and it will also be posted. So all shall be fine. Thank you.